Hi Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your October 1st to the 15th, 2020 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. And if you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they are all located in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let's clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from your body, like storm clouds. Feeling yourself become calm, steady, and at peace as you enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bull sing. As we see what the tarot has to say. Scorpio, October 1st to the 15th, 2020, Scorpio. 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 Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Awesome. All right, I do want to say that with the singing bowl, and it, it's not just you guys. It has been happening with others. I go to sing the singing bowl and it sings. And this time it gently kind of faded away, right? The, the sound, the vibration, which is, which is perfectly fine. But there is a sense here and I'm just feeling a blockage around your throat chakra. There is something here where it's kind of like, okay, you're, you're trying to say something, you're building up this power, this energy, and then it's kind of like fizzling out. It could be even thinking, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You build up this power, you build up this energy, energy, and then it just kind of fizzles out. So that is something to be mindful of during this time, which is, which is going to be intense for you. Okay. It's not that this time is necessarily going to be more intense than other times. It's just that that energy around you right now just needed to be addressed right off the bat. So let's see what your chakra energy is. All right. Scorpio, October 1st to the 15th, 2020 Scorpio. October 1st to the 15th, 2020 Scorpio. October 1st to the 15th, 2020 Scorpio. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Oh, wow, okay. So we'll use these four <laughs> that came out all at once. It's gorgeous. And we're starting with family, the root chakra. What is the grounding root that is the most important for you? What is this, what are you rooting yourself with? Who is your family? It can either be biological family or the family you grew up with, or it can be, you know, the family that you've created for yourself. There is a look, there's a look right now at your roots, at what you desire from your life, and at the way that you are moving forward. Okay? So that's starting it right off the bat. And then we have relationships. This is a sacral chakra. This is saying that you are building relationships within yourself 
around you. This is where a lot of negativity is held from this life and from past lives. So do be mindful as you are moving forward in a binding of relationships and it's a steadying of things. So it can be opening up yourself to relationships, which, you know, can be a bit intense, especially during this time in our world right now. There is also a sense of the relationship, and this is really quite potent, the relationship, Scorpio, that you have with yourself, the relationship that you you have as you're moving forward towards something more. It's like you are sitting here and you're looking at where you are and where you want to be and what you need in order to get there. It's that balancing of the masculine and the feminine energy inside of you. It is the balancing of your love and your desire for what you want as you move forward. And it's the relationship that you have with your dreams. Oh, that's it. That just lifted a weight off of my chest. So that could even be what you're, you're looking at right now. Yeah, very, very distinctly. It's that relationship that you have with your dreams, that you have with what you desire from life. And I just feel as if, yeah, the throat chakra has kind of opened up as you kind of, as you embrace what you, you most want from life. And as you embrace maybe even what's keeping you held back from what you desire, from what you want from life, the fears that are there. And it's building a relationship with your inner desire, your inner self, your passion, your beauty, your truth. It's also strengthening the relationships that you have within your life. Those are going to be very important to you. The relationships that you have with others, the relationships that you have with yourself. There's a sense of love and commitment coming forward. Then we have angels and masters. The angels and divinity here guiding you forward. Greater connection, greater you know, greater understanding. This is the soul star chakra located, you know, six inches above your crown. This is your angels wrapping their wings around you, protecting you, guiding you forward, opening up your mind, opening up your soul, opening up yourself. And there is a sense of really letting the divine energy that is around you have a say in your life, have, have the power that, that it needs to move you forward. And then we have, then we have the throat chakra. This is truth. Are you living your truth? And that's why the relationship with your dreams is so important. Are you living your truth? Are you living what you desire? Now, this doesn't mean every moment of every day is going to be joyous and fun and blissful and happy. It, it doesn't. It means that you are really connecting to what is important to you, to that kind of family root that you have, that, that innate sense of connection. It doesn't have to be with other people. It can be with your dreams, your soul, yourself, that rooted connection to what is super precious to you. And here with your throat chakra, it is speaking your truth. It is balancing your truth. It is living in your truth. And it is trusting that truth to, to move you forward. It's that passion and it is, and it is the emotion behind it. It is the passion and the depth of your soul. So we have here on the left-hand side, this is your inner self. The middle is your heart, your emotional self. The right-hand side is your public arena, your public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We start off here with, with judgment, okay? There is a sense here of that resurrection, that connection with your angels, that moving towards a awakening of self and seeing something so much deeper, so much more powerful as you look out at the future, but also as you look at what you've been working towards, the hard work, the dedication, the diligence that you've put in. Other people want to kind of take responsibility for this. They want to, not responsibility, they want to claim the accusation, accusation, the acclaim. There we go. We'll go, go with that word. The acclaim for it. But it is your hard work. It's your dedication. The report the repeat of the number three is is divinity being with you. You have such divine presence that it is that it is astounding. And it can be overwhelming when you have a divine presence like this in your life, in your soul, in yourself, that it's it's opening up doors for you. It's you looking at things differently. You're looking at a horizon, but you're also looking at the hard work that will come with any change that you make. You know, we like to think that, oh, it's going to be easier if I just do this. It's not going to be easier. It's going to be different. And sometimes the way that it is different makes it appear easier to us. But it doesn't mean that the burdens that come from simply living are going to be lifted. You have the sun right here, the happiest card in the whole entire deck. This is brilliance. This is joy. This is happiness. This is success coming forward. 
Then we have the Page of Pentacles. This is being a student of your prosperity. All right, this is looking at the seeds that you want to plant. This is looking at what you want from this world. As you move forward, it moves you to the fool. It's moving on a journey that you yourself may not have expected. It doesn't mean that you physically have to go anywhere, but it can mean that you are opening up your mind, you're opening up yourself, you're opening up your world to something so much more than what you had anticipated before. And people are going to think, oh my gosh, you're so foolish, you know? But as you, as you succeed, as it plays off your strengths and your powers and your brilliance and yourself, you, you find that they... It's weird to say they think of you as a hero, but they do. They think of you as one of those people who was kind of able to go off the beaten track and do something that might seem very niche, that might seem very, you know, kind of out there, but is that is absolutely, that is absolutely positive in your life. And then you have the King of Cups. This is you in the Minor Arcana. You're represented by the Cups in the Minor Arcana. You're represented by the Death card in the Major Arcana. This is a sense of your power. You're claiming your throne. You're claiming your truth. And you're taking a gift that Divinity is giving you of, of a cleansing. It can be an astoundingly emotional time. That's why you can start off, as we saw with the singing bowl, very strong. And then it kind of just let things become softer. It was still singing, but it becomes softer. And so here, it's like as you're embracing your heart, you're embracing your passion, you're embracing your soul, you're embracing yourself, things become softer because there's being a cleanse of peace that is coming forward with you. Then we have the Knight of Swords. This is air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. This is a sense of charging forward, of cutting through doubts and fears. You're really quite a force to be reckoned with in the public arena. The... Hermit comes in. This is Virgo energy, August 23rd to October 22nd. This is turning in on your truth. It's like as you start this journey, you see what's important to you, not what the rest of the world says is supposed to be important, but what is important to you. And then as you're claiming that, you are finding yourself really connecting with standing your ground, knowing your truth and knowing what you stand for, knowing what you desire. And it's it's a karmic debt being pay, paid. It is a, you know, it's a life purpose coming forward. And it doesn't mean that you're going to know your life purpose right away. Like everything just becomes clear. But it means that you're, you're seeing things and you're seeing things that let you know that you're on the right path. You know, you're seeing things that let you know that you're standing up for your truth. You're standing up for your power. And it brings you to the King of Pentacles, Earth Side Energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. In your heart, you are a student. In the public arena, you are a king. You are determined, dedicated, and maybe even a bit unyielding as you move forward towards success. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Let's look at... The people who will be aiding you during this time. Scorpio, October 1st to the 15th, 2020 Scorpio. Who will be aiding Scorpio, October 1st to the 15th, 2020 Scorpio. October 1st to the 15th, 2020 Scorpio. Who will be aiding Scorpio, October 1st to the 15th. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Oh, fantastic. You have four. That's awesome. And remember, you don't have to know these people in real life. You can be inspired by this energy in a myriad of different ways. So we start off with the Queen of Cups, Water Sign Energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. This is a person who kind of speaks the same language as you. And this is a person who you'll really emotionally, vibrationally understand because they have this this emotional power to them. They have this emotional awakening to them that really enlightens you, gives you greater understanding, helps you move forward towards a greater truth. They're, they're wise. They're emotionally very connected. They're opening up doors for you in a way that connects to your heart because you are coming through as the king. So this person coming through as a queen, you know, just kind of gives you that, that little bit of information that has been missing, that, that feminine quality that you, you are calling into your life and that is coming forward for you. 
because you have very kingly energy during this time you're really embracing the sacred masculine which is helping you move forward in determination helping you look at things rather kind of strategically and moving forward in that passionate truth then you have the queen of swords again the queenly energy here that you're going to be getting from outside sources outside you know influences this sense of knowledge the sense of understanding this is a warrior queen okay the queen of swords is the warrior queen she's the only one that holds a real kind of weapon and i say kind of because a staff can be a weapon right but it doesn't really have the same oomph as a sword does so here with the queen of swords this is a person that has you looking at things more openly more honestly you might actually think this person is a little bit haughty the way that they present themselves might be very different from the way that you present yourself but they they have very valuable information that is moving you towards a greater inspiration a greater kind of like this fresh fresh breath of knowledge understanding compassion and truth and these two queens, they definitely talk to each other. So it's the queen of the heart and the queen of the mind coming together. So this, there's one energy that's going to be speaking to your heart. There's the other energy that's speaking to your mind. And your mind and your heart are kind of like having this conversation. They're connecting with each other. Because I believe that we are emotional beings. And as emotional beings, we have to have the mind and the heart come together and gain that understanding. Because we can't be purely logic and we can't be purely emotion. We have to be, you know, we have to kind of embrace this middle ground that is so important and then we have here the princess of swords this is going to be a younger energy of the queen of swords it doesn't mean that this person has to be younger it means that they have a more youthful energy around them or an innocence around them that the queen doesn't have the queen has seen more is more mature isn't going to put up with people's nonsense and so here with the princess of swords you are going to be seeing this person kind of like they're going to be offering new ideas, new ways to look at things, new insights, new understandings, things that you haven't thought about before. There's a sharpness to their words. There might be a bit of a bluntness, but there is also a sense of cutting through the fears that have held you back. And Scorpio, that's going to be a really powerful truth for you because as you're moving forward, you're looking at the rest of the world. And yes, of course, the rest of the world is important, but you're really embracing that King of, of Cups energy that says, I can only rule myself. That's it. That's the only person I have any power over. So how am I going to do this? How am I going to rule me in a dignified, honorable, prosperous way? And it leads you right here to justice. So Libra energy coming in. And this is a time frame of October, no, September 23rd. There we go to October 22nd. And this can be very powerful, especially if you are on the cusp with a Libra. This is going to be an energy that really makes sense to you. There's a sense of justice here. Now, Scorpio, you take justice from the heart. Libra may very well take justice and has a tendency to take justice from the mind. So this can be where the heart and mind is coming together to really embrace a sense of justice, a sense of balance. It doesn't mean that it has to be like the letter of the law. That's going to actually be something that you might sit there and actually find a bit distasteful. But there is a balance. There is an understanding that is coming forward, that is moving you to cut through doubts and fears. And this person is helping you see that balance, that harmony within yourself and within the the wisdom of the greater world around you. You might have thought, oh, I'm always going to kind of be this way or associate this way. And then you're starting to find that moving forward with a sense of more of a heart's understanding is going to be to be better. It's kind of like folding away Spirit is showing me a falling away of the chains of society. And I don't want to sit there and be like, oh, it's just going to be chaos because that's not what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a sense of, it's like the cloak that everybody wants everybody else to wear. It's like, this is the way we're supposed to be. And no matter what group, you know, of people sits there and shouts, this is the way we're supposed to be. It's kind of like Scorpio, you've had enough. It's like, oh my gosh, shh, shh, you know, let us all just be. And that's where you're having this resurrection of power and understanding because you're stepping in and you're like, throwing off this this shadowy cloak and you're saying this is who I am and this is where I stand and this is what I stand for and I don't need to be be in this chaos of who can shout loudest okay I'm going to be focused on the energy that flows within my soul and within myself and what heals and empowers me and that is where you have this resurrection of power that's where you have your angels wrapping their wings around you and saying this is your truth 
this is your truth. Walk in your truth. This is a way of rising up into power, into greatness, into a beauty that is that is enchanting, that is beautiful, and that is powerfully and absolutely you. And it has you looking at the horizon so much differently than before. It's like, okay, the world is opening up to me. It might not be quite literally because, you know, there are restrictions and everything like that. But the world is opening up to you in your mind because you're claiming a different power than before. It's like you're, yeah, you're, you're, okay. So you see this light here at the heart that others are hiding away from or falling down with and how he's looking at it. And that's going to be it. It's like you're looking at this light now. You're looking at this truth. You're looking at this emotional understanding. You're looking at this power of soul and coming together and, and connection. And it shines a light on you. And it's like, oh, that's how I can move forward. That's where I need to be. It's in that light. It's in that truth. It's in that harmony of understanding. It's in that, you know, power of purpose. It's in that, that greatness that is me. And I can move forward that way, can't I? I can be that person, aren't I? And you ask yourself that question because you're seeing your ships come in. You're seeing dreams that you have had. You're seeing, you know, desires that you have. You're seeing a new way of looking at things. And instead of it being all disjointed and, <clears throat> excuse me, and seeming impersonal, it's like, okay, well, what would, what would this person think about this? And today I was washing my hands and I was thinking of my grandma. Now I was raised by my mom, my grandma, and my great-grandma. And it was, it was quite lovely. But my grandma and my great-grandma have passed. And they passed when I was rather small. And it was absolutely devastating. And I was thinking, you know, what would she think? And that put things so much more in per perspective. For what would my grandma think? Then what would everybody else think? Because, you know, everybody else, you know, they're abstract. I, I didn't know them. But this person I knew and I highly respected and modeled my life after. And that's what you're going to be doing for you. It's astoundingly, oh, with that just like, who? Oh. <laughs> it's an astoundingly personal time for you, Scorpio. It's an astoundingly personal revelation, power, understanding, fire, passion, beauty that, that you are embracing. And it's your horizon. It's your beauty. It's your truth. It's nobody else's. So kind of let them all think what they want to think as your horizon opens to you, as you see the way that you want to move forward. And it doesn't mean that, you know, this has to do with passion. This has to do with the fire of why you're here on this earthly plane. It doesn't have to mean that, you know, you run off, you, you know, change jobs, you, you know, just kind of go after what you want right now. It can mean that you're planning, you know, you're setting things up. Yeah, you're going after something so much greater and you have this greater plan. And, you know, your job could always just be your job. It can just be the way that you're doing things and what, you know, pays the bills and puts food on the table, which is absolutely important, absolutely important, Okay. And you can have a hobby on the side that really speaks to your soul, speaks to your heart, speaks to yourself. And that hobby on your side could be, you know, your family or the people who become like family to you. It can be music, it can be art, it can be, you know, math, it can be science, it can be whatever it is that really lights your fire. That is what you're, you're looking at and that's what's opening up the world to you. You're not seeing the same restrictions that were there before. You're coming out of the shadows. And as you come out of the shadows, you see the hard work that you've put into things. You see the hard work, the dedication, the, you know, the power of yourself, the power of your being, the power of your truth. And other people will want to take credit for this. It's like, wow, look what I did. It's like, okay, yeah, okay, that's great. Look what I did. Look at how far I've come. Look at how much passion and beauty I have to create this art, which is my prosperity, which is my success, which is my bounty, which are the, the light of the of the seeds that I have planted. Because here, these are stained glass windows, right? And stained glass windows bring in the light. They bring it muted, okay, than a regular window does. But it takes time, it takes effort, it takes craftsmanship to create them. So your prosperity is lighting your path and lighting your way as you move forward. And it's bringing you to happiness, to joy, to celebration, to understanding, to, to bounty coming forward. And, I don't know, here, it's so funny. Because... The angel here, the look on his face looks like surprise. It's like, wow, I'm surprised to see you and you're, you're a heck of a surprise to see me. So it can all be a bit of a surprise 
personally what's developing for you. And then there's this peace, there's this joy, there's this understanding of the power that is around you, of what is moving you forward. And it's like, oh, wow, this is it, isn't it? You know, this is my happiness. This is my happy place. This is the radiance that gets to shine from me. And internally, you're really embracing this. It's like this gets to be my warmth, my what warms me, body, mind, and spirit, what lights my way and brings me a path to my truth. And with the sun, the thing we always have to remember is that when we have the sun burning bright inside of us, people look at us and with this light and with this beauty and say, well, why not me? You know, why can't I have this? Why do you get it and not me? And here it is a looking at the passion and the beauty that you have and knowing that, yeah, people will want to take you by eyes. People want to sit there and go, well, why not me? You know, why do you get to be this way? And I, I don't agree with you. And, you know, how dare you? And it's like, how dare you want to steal somebody else's joy and happiness that they've worked for and worked towards? So don't let people make you feel guilty, Scorpio, for, for having this radiance about you at your heart. You are being a student of the seeds that you are planting, of the prosperity that you want. This is earth sign energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And this studentness, okay, this sense of uh, spirit is saying academic inquiry. And it doesn't have to necessarily, and I, I find that a bit funny because it's like, okay, you can't learn life from a book. But, you know, there is the sense of going deeper, finding out more information, looking at what's important to you and sitting there and saying, why? You know, why is that important to me? Why is that a seed that I want to plant? Why does that hold such passion and such beauty and such truth for me? Why? Why is that door opening? Why do I want to walk through it? You know, and that's what you're looking at yourself and you're looking at your truth with. It's like, why am I walking through this door to this passion, to this power, to this brilliance, to this truth? And what you're seeing here, it's because it's time to start your hero's journey. And life, you know, is our hero's journey. Being able to move forward, being able to walk in our truth, that is our hero's journey. To be able to be us and, and take those risks and walk out on a limb is, is part of that, that hero's tale. And so here, every hero, before they succeed, is a fool. Every person, before they succeed, is a fool. And so you might have people, as you're looking at this new horizon that opens up for you, you might very well have people here, Scorpio, at your heart, you know, that are coming through. And these could be people that you talked to years ago, you know, sitting there and telling you that you're foolish. This could be people that have spoken negativity over you because they were angry at the own impotence of their lives and made you doubt your dreams, made you doubt where you could stand, may, gave you a look that said, oh, you really think you can do that? You know, I'm so much more talented. I'm so much more, you know, more than you are. You know, what made you think that you could have this dream? And the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter. Sometimes, okay, have you ever seen people who are super, super talented, but they're not that successful, okay? And you have other people who aren't really that talented at all, but they are successful. And some of it, yes, is circumstance and everything like that. But if you took people who were, you know, kind of raised with the same advantages and you have a person with talent who lets it dwindle away and you have a person who isn't that talented but has this gumption to say, I'm going to walk this path and I'm going to walk this truth and I'm going to go after it. That's the difference. That's the difference here that Spirit is showing me. It is a sense of I'm, I'm going to go for it and I'm not going to let fear keep on dictating my life, my soul, myself. And so when your heart starts going after its hero's path, starts going after its truth and its beauty and its connection. It opens up a door to you that, you know, you thought, oh, wow, I thought this was closed. I thought I gave up on this years ago. And it doesn't mean that all of a sudden you're going to be world renowned. It means that you're going to start embracing your bliss because a life lived without happiness in it, without, you know, without joy, without love, without power of self and of soul is an existence. It's, it's not the full power of it all. And so here with this hero's path, that's what you're walking towards. And it makes you a king. It makes you the king of cups, which is you. And what I love about the king of cups is here he is on his throne on this rock in the middle of the ocean. Well, in the ocean, right? You have the world behind to him and you think, okay, that's what he's the king of. But it never says that. You know, it is implied. 
And what I see the King of Cups as is as we have the light that we have worked on so hard and so long shine upon us. The King of Cups is saying, you're only the King of you. You can only rule one person and that's it. And that is yourself. And here he is rejoicing in that, which is, which is awesome. He is rejoicing in that knowledge. It's like, I cannot, because we can't, I cannot control anybody else. You know, my nephew is <laughs> not even two. And sometimes I sit there and I'm trying to get him to do things and absolutely will of his own will not do it whatsoever. And you sit there and you're like, wow, if I can't get, you know, a baby, a toddler <laughs> to do what they're supposed to do, how are you supposed to get adults to do so when they can have more of a will and more of a defiance? So here it is, it is that understanding that is, that is moving you forward. It's like, okay, I can only judge myself and judge my world on my follow through, right? on me and the way that I rule myself by example that will help you know have other people look at you and think oh wow, I want to do that I want to be I want to have that happiness I want to have that success I want to have that that sense of jubilation and power and brilliance coming forward I can do that I can do that if it gets me to where I want to be I can be more like you Scorpio that's what they're going to say so it's it's living by that example and it's not doing it because you want other people to follow you. It's not saying I'm going to be an example, follow my wisdom. It is saying I'm living my life and I'm done. I'm done worrying about everything and everyone and every nuance, you know, whatever. And I'm, I'm living my life. And as you do so, the gift from God's source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe comes in and anoints you, anoints you with power and with grace and with a washing away of the tears and the doubts and the fears and it doesn't mean that they never come back because they always come back. But it's a sense of a layer being washed away. It's a sense of a truth being seen and a power being understood. And it's a sense of a claiming of your soul and yourself and your power and your peace and your beauty and messages of hope coming forward and anointing your heart. And as these waters pour forward, it can make us highly emotional. It really can. It can be, you can almost feel like, your, your heart is on overdrive during this time, Scorpio. And for a water sign energy to feel like their, their heart is on overdrive can be quite intense, so do be mindful. But there is a sense here of a greater awakening, a greater power, a greater beauty, a greater truth coming forward to bring that peace. And what it really does for you as it has you claiming this power and you take it as, as a king does and you hold yourself up as an example and people look at you because that's what people do with kings. They look at the kings and their attention goes that way and it becomes your heart. And I don't want to say it becomes your greatest weapon as if, you know, it becomes a bad thing, but your heart becomes your greatest defense for your truth, your passion, your power, your desire for where you want to be. And it opens you up to the Knight of Swords that is coming forward in the public arena. It's like, I am moving towards my goals. I'm moving towards what I want. I'm cutting through doubts and fears. I will not be held back. And usually with the Knight of Swords, it's like, okay, think things through before you act. And yes, think things through before you act. Don't just sit there and think, okay, well, that sounds good, going to go for it. It's like, okay, listen, this is what I want. This is what I need. This is what I'm moving after. And I'm, I'm going towards that truth, that passion, that power, that brilliance but it's becoming that white knight of your existence, you know? And they ride in on their white seed and they, they slay the dragons. The dragons are the demons within our own minds. The dragons are the way that we look at things that holds us back and that keeps us from the treasure, right? Because dragons just accumulate. And so here it is slaying the doubts, it is slaying the fears, it is slaying the, the monsters that the world puts before us. And it's saying, this is where I stand. This is what I stand for. And there's a ferocity to you during this time that is amazing, but there's also this sense of, you know, people keep your distance, okay? Because you have this hermit time, you're turning inward, okay? Virgo energy, August 23rd to September 22nd. And it's like, listen, I need to know my truth. I need to know my passion. I need to know my power. I need to be guided by my light and my, my understanding. And that is where I stand. And that is what I stand for. And so as you have this light guiding you forward, you're looking at things so differently than you have before. You're looking at you differently than you have before. And it's opening up doors for you. It's that guiding light of the soul, the passion, the beauty, the truth, the understanding, the brilliance. And it's like, okay, I need this quiet time for me. 
as I am taking this leap of faith on myself, as I am moving forward in a way that is brilliant, I need to, to take time for me. And it leads you to this sense that you're facing what has once held you back. Now, it can be a feeling of deja vu. You know, like, oh, wow, this feels really familiar to me. But it can also be this, this sense of, yeah, here with the, okay, so with the five of swords, for me, it is a karmic debt coming forward. It is a life purpose being looked at. And it is the things that have held you back before, not holding you back now. And you're going to see, now you can fall into the same patterns, kind of like have things happen and have them play out the same way that they've, they've played out before. But you're going to be presented and you're going to have this beautiful way of, for a lot of you Scorpios, of handling it differently. But you're going to be presented with something where either this person makes you think of somebody you worked with before, somebody you knew before, and your spirit, your essence of yourself is going to be handling it differently. Is going to be handling the trials, the tribulations, the angers, the upsets that you are faced with differently than before. And it empowers you, it emboldens you, it moves you forward, it shows you that you're not stuck. And it shows you that even though it might seem mean to you, it's not mean. It's like, this is my truth, this is my passion, this is where I stand, this is what I stand for, and this is me. And it's not mean at all. It is me. And sometimes we have to be a bit fierce when we are, you know, standing our ground and, and claiming who we are and knowing who we are. And it actually leads you to prosperity. It leads you to a success coming. Now, with the King of Pentacles, this is a success that is seen. It doesn't have to be money, though I would love it if you had a windfall. That would be awesome. But it can be something you value as much as money coming into your life. The way that you are nurturing, the way that you are connecting, you know, what you are planting and what you desire in your world and in your existence and it moving you forward. And so here with the, yeah, with the King of Pentacles, you're looking at the prosperity that you want. You're looking at the power that you have and you're seeing it manifest in a way that moves you to a next level, that moves you to a greater kind of harvest here on this earthly plane. And that is awesome. That is absolutely awesome. And it comes from this cleansing. People take you by eyes, most definitely, because there is this power, there is this purpose, there is this dedication, determination to you. And people don't know how to deal with that. They'll sit there and they'll deal with it by being jealous. Instead of saying, you know what? Bless you. You know, and not in that condescending, bless you way, but in that, like, blessings be to you, that you move forward in success and you move forward in prosperity. And the blessings will be to me too, because I will move forward in success and prosperity as it is my time and as I work everything out. But people get jealous and people get jealous really fast. And we can find ourselves, even when we're trying not to be jealous, we can find ourselves comparing and contrasting and sitting there and looking at everything and thinking, wow, I'm supposed to be so much further ahead than I am. A huge thing that is coming forward right now is divine timing. Move forward in divine timing and move forward in the power of divine timing. It's not about what we want when we want it. It is about the divine knowledge, the divine understanding that moves us towards a greater truth and a greater passion and a greater power than we had realized. All right, so let's go deeper. Scorpio. October 1st to the 15th, 2020, Scorpio. October 1st to the 15th, 2020, Scorpio. Show me more deeply. For Scorpio, October 1st to the 15th, 2020, Scorpio. Show me more deeply for Scorpio. October 1st to the 15th, 2020, Scorpio. Show me more deeply for Scorpio. October 1st to the 15th, 2020, Scorpio. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Awesome. And let's look at who you have to be mindful of during this time. Who does Scorpio need to be mindful of? October 1st to the 15th, 2020, Scorpio. 
Who does Scorpio have to be mindful of? October 1st to the 15th, 2020 Scorpio. Who does Scorpio have to be mindful of? October 1st to the 15th, 2020 Scorpio. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic, these three. I love it when the people who aid you outnumber the people to be mindful of. It always makes me just feel like, oh, good. <laughs> so we're starting off with Pisces. This is a time frame of February 19th to March 20th. This is fear-mongling, okay? This really is. And in this time, it doesn't have to be a Pisces at all. Everybody is playing off of everybody's fears. And this is really to be mindful of that, really to be mindful of fear and of, yeah, and of having that fear become amplified and amplified and amplified. So here it is a sense of saying, you know what, fear keeps people alive. It does, most definitely. It's definitely what kept our ancestors alive as they were hunters gatherers and as we evolved as human beings, we've evolved so much in such a short period of time from the way that we live and you know everything like that to the way we once did even a hundred years ago. It's so different. And so here, it is saying, okay, I'm not going to let fear rule me. Fear keeps you safe, yes. It can be used as a motivator, most definitely, but it will not rule my life. And that is going to be something beautiful that you do for yourself. And that is going to be what you sit there and with people, it's like, no, if they're going to just build up fear, I don't need to be there. And that's, yeah, that's going to be the truth of this card. And that's what you have to be mindful of. And then we have the Princess of Pentacles, Earth Sign Energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. This is somebody who's very wishy-washy about money, very, or what you value as much as money. They hem and they haw, they bite their nails, they twirl their hair, they could fret their lips a lot, and they sit there and they think, oh, well, maybe this or maybe that or maybe this or maybe that, and you just don't need that. There's a decisiveness that you have around you during this time, and you don't need all the questioning and the anger and the negativity that this person's indecisiveness can bring and I do apologize if you can hear my nephew. Then we have the chariot. This is cancer energy. This is somebody who is moving forward, and this is a time frame of July, of June 21st to July 22nd. This is somebody who's moving forward in just, in their own emotions. They don't care who they trample over. So just be mindful of that because you will definitely, you could definitely be swept up in their emotions and they'll take you along for the ride because they want more people to fight for them but they, they don't want to fight for kind of anybody else. So just be mindful of that. You have judgment on top of judgment, a resurrection, a power, a claiming. Oh, <laughs> that's intense. Then you have the six of wands, which is celebration and beauty moving forward. You're looking at the paths differently. You're looking at your, your way forward differently. And that's really quite, quite powerful for you. Roads are opening up that you hadn't expected. Then you have balance coming in, temperance, you know, this is a Sagittarius energy, November 22nd to December 21st. Very powerful, especially if you're born on the cusp with Sagittarius, but there's a balance coming forward, a kind of moving the knowledge of the day and the night, the, the self that is seen and the shadowed self. Then you have the world opening up to you and you have the King of Wands, Fire Sign Energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, very strong Sagittarian energy here as you claim this power and this truth. Kingly energy, sacred masculine energy is definitely around you, definitely empowering you during this time. You have you shining through and I'm not surprised at all. Death card, you are represented by the death card in the Major Arcana. It's transformation. Scorpio, you are all about transformation and you are determined to transform your life, to move forward in a greater understanding, a greater passion, a greater truth. As you embrace the Six of Cups, there's a sense of nostalgia here. There can be a sense of looking backwards as you're looking at, yeah, at what you have to face kind of karmically and to move forward in your life path the way that you want to. And then justice comes in once again, this Libra energy, and there is a balancing of the scales. There is a knowing of this truth. So that is, that is super super powerful because you have here a resurrection of power. You have here yourself looking forward and looking at things so much more openly, so much more honestly than before. You're moving forward in a path that you hadn't anticipated that is a horizon opening up to you, is a way that is really quite 
more than, than you had thought it would be. And it moves you to the six of, of wands and you have the repeat of the number six here, which as the world opens up, there's a sense of a celebration and a dedication. And then there's a sense of nostalgia of, oh, things, I would have done this better when, or things would have been better when. And it's like, no, you are moving forward in this passion, in this knowledge, and you're learning to celebrate yourself, to celebrate where you want to be, to celebrate how you want to be within your life. And you have this beauty, this understanding, this knowledge, this wisdom moving you, guiding you, being your light. And as you move forward with it, you're seeing the world differently than you have before because you are embracing this happiness, this joy, this passion, this beauty. You're having roads open up to you. You're having paths open up to you that you thought, okay, it could be one way or another. I'm not really thrilled with either one, but you know, I'm just going to resign myself. And here it's, it's no, so much more is coming your way. So much more is what you are meant to, to be embracing. And that, that is brilliant. And then you have the, the prosperity coming, you have the hero's journey starting. And here with the temperance, you you have the gold cup and you have the silver cup, you have the day and the night, you have the the seen self and the shadowed self coming together, pouring knowledge, pouring wisdom, pouring understanding to as you are learning to what you want, to the seeds that you are planting, to the way that you're moving forward. And it's like, oh wow, there's such a greater balance here than I had realized. And there's so much more strength to me than I had thought. And as you do this, the world opens and the world opens as you claim your power, as you claim where you stand and what you stand for. And it brings forward passion and power and brilliance and beauty. And it brings forward this Sagittarian energy of greater study, of greater intrigue, of greater understanding. And it isn't a time and it isn't an energy where it's like, okay, I will then go forward and share this with everybody right away. It's like, okay, I have to kind of sit on this, I have to understand it, and then you'll share it when you're ready. But you're moving forward really in this sacred masculine energy of, of this healing border coming in and an opening of your heart. And now it's like, this is my passion. This is what I get out of bed in the morning for. This is what I'm rolling up my sleeves and going after. And there's nothing and no one that will stop me. And it moves you to an embracing of the essence and the truth of you in the major, in the, in the major arcana, okay, this is the essence of you, but in the major arena, in the public arena of life, it's like, this is me. This is where I stand. This is what I stand for. This is what I want. And nothing and no one is going to hold me back. This is transformation. This is, you know, what I love it is we were seeing the imagery here of the throwing off the cloak. And here you have death. Death is cloaked. So you are cloaked. And as you step into your power, you throw off that cloak and you see the true transformation of self. And that is glorious. And you see it as you turn inward, as you look at your soul, your passion, what you desire, what you want. And it has here with the Six of Cups. Yes, as you face things, it's going to bring up the past because you're facing something karmic. You're facing something that you have faced before or that you has been a powerful part of a past life or your DNA line before. And it seems like such a familiar memory, but you're finding that you handle it so much differently. And you might think, oh my gosh, I'm handling this wrong. It's so different than maybe what it should be or what I thought it would be. And it's like, no, you're going to find that you're handling it the right way, especially if you stand in your truth and you stand in your passion and you look at things and say, you know, is this, is this me? Is this where I'm supposed to be? Is this who I'm supposed to be? Because you're fighting for something great here. You're fighting for, for the powerful transformation of what you want from your life. And as you embrace this and as you move away from the past, and you move away from the negativity that was spoken over you in the past, you find justice. And that brings you prosperity. You find justice. You find a balancing of the scales, the, the cutting through doubts and the fears. You find the power, the magnitude. And it just, it's like you have this resurrection of spirit. It opens the world for you and it brings justice and beauty into your life. And it doesn't mean that everything works out fair and they all live, you know, happily ever after right away. It means that you're working towards your truth, your power, your passion, and what you desire. It means that you're work looking at the world so much more differently because what you once thought you were barred from, what you once thought could never be you, has now become a part of you, has now become the passion that you live for and the truth that you have. And you're going to see that the doors that were once barred and guarded and, you know, you just really thought that could never be where I walk, starts to be exactly where you walk. 
And you start to realize, and spirit is just saying, dreams do come true. They do. Let's see what your spirit animal message is for this time. Scorpio. October 1st to the 15th, 2020, Scorpio. October 1st to the 15th, 2020, Scorpio. October 1st to the 15th, 2020, Scorpio. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Oh, cool, you have three. That's awesome. Now, what I love about the spirit guide animal cards is that, the spirit guide animals, is that when you see these animals in real life or you see an image of them, these are your angels and your spirit guides tapping you on, the, on your shoulders saying, Scorpio, remember this message. So you start here with the lizard spirit. Dream your world into being. And that's really what you're doing. You are creating the world that you want. You are dreaming your world into being. You are sitting there. And it's not, you know, it's not simply the art of manifestation. But the art of manifestation is powerful because the place that we start creating our lives is within our mind. So when we're dreaming our world into being, it's, it's looking at our dreams and what are we afraid of? You know, what is holding us back? Is our dream something so precious and so beautiful to, our, to us that, that living it can seem, can seem almost to sully it, almost to mar it, you know? So here, as you dream your, as you, as you dream your world into being, okay, as you look at your dreams and you look at what you desire and you look at what you want and you create it around you, it's also looking at what's holding you back, what's making you doubt that you could move forward this way. It's what's making you think, oh no, I, I couldn't possibly. And it's looking at that and it's first dealing with that before what you dream can become part of your reality. So you dream your world into being and you look at every nuance of that dream and you see yourself standing in it, holding it deeply and powerfully to your heart and bringing it forward. It then brings you to the butterfly spirit. Transformation is beautiful. And the transformation that you're going through is beautiful as you have this belief and power and, and you know, drive of self that is moving you forward. And then we have here the stag spirit. Take that leap. Take that leap within your majesty towards your power, towards your beauty, towards what you desire from life. Take that leap. You're worth it. And it can be that you're working up to that leap. You're w working up to that truth, to that brilliance. Because Spirit is saying, if not now, then when? And there's something that my mother always says. And she says, what if you turned away from, from your dream, from your path, right when you were supposed to succeed, right when you were right there, but you gave up? And that, oh, that always sticks in my craw. I mean, seriously, that's always so, such an intense thing to think of. It's like, what if you turn away? right when you were about to succeed? And what if the road that you thought, okay, this is the road, this is exactly the way that I'm supposed to succeed. And Spirit is saying, no, it's, it's this way. Look at it this way. Open up your mind. Open up yourself and take that leap. It's going to be different than you had thought it was going to be. It does not mean it's going to be less powerful. Your subconscious spirit animal message is the swan spirit. Take that deep dive. Take that deep dive in believing in yourself. Take that deep dive into the waters of your truth. It leads you to your subconscious person message, which is the Prince of Pentacles. You're slowly and steadily moving to your prosperity, to your power, to your abundance, to yourself. It's a slow go because anything built to last takes time. See what your subconscious chakra message is. Nurturing. This is the Earth Star Chakra located six inches below your feet. You are nurturing your prosperity. You are nurturing your bounty. You are nurturing what is most important within your life. Your hopes, your dreams, your passions. And it doesn't have to be something anybody else understands. It's your life and it's your right to live it as you choose. As long as you are coming from a place of kindness and love and compassion... You know, you're not hurting anybody. Move forward. Your subconscious tarot message is the two of pentacles. 
You're balancing a lot, Scorpio, and you're forgetting to balance you. Emotions are running high. It's balancing yourself. It's saying that, okay, so it's kind of like a cup. It's very much like a cup. A cup's job is to hold water. When that cup is broken, it's not a cup anymore. It doesn't do what it was supposed to do, or it doesn't function the way it's supposed to function. If you're balancing everything for everybody else, but you forget to balance yourself, and you can break, and you can kind of just be too stressed and too overwhelmed, is saying, let go of some things. Or don't think that you have to be a superhero with each and everything that you are trying to balance. Sometimes, sometimes, letting go a little bit can actually make it better. It can. It can make you happier, first of all, which is always better. And it can make the situation just a little bit better because you're giving it a chance to develop and grow kind of on its own. You know, not on its own, but, you know, take on that life and that understanding that it's supposed to take on with the two of pentacles as you're balancing the spiritual and the practical as you're balancing everything that needs to be done. Make sure that you're not a broken cup, that you're not leaking out all the beauty and all the passion that divinity is putting into you. So make sure that you balance yourself because then it's going to be a whole cup, a fixed cup, a, a strong cup. To go deeper into your subconscious message. We have the eight of wands. Things really do start to change. It's like once you find your balance, once you find your footing, things change. It's like ready or not, here it comes. And you are ready for that change. You have the repeat. No, you don't have the repeat of the number eight. But there's a sense here of taking things very seriously, being very dedicated, being very determined, okay? I know that that energy, you might start to take things just a little bit too seriously at times. So make sure that you have that balance moving you forward. All right, Scorpio. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as our angels walk with us, as life is changing for the better, and as you are profoundly and deeply blessed as you rise. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Scorpio.